Why hello fellow viewers, today I am going to do a timeless video along with commentary on how I did this painting of a woman and a skinned crocodile. Yeah, um, what's that about? Now before you go on and accuse me of animal cruelty, I, I don't get excited over crocodiles without their skin, okay? It's just it's just weird, you know? This is actually the first piece to my other new project, not that I already have other projects, <coughs> project on animal awareness. I started my first one with Malaysian Beauties about animals found in my own country. How's it going? Uh, yeah, it's not so good. I made videos on how I painted them and also did videos about their lifestyle, so you guys can go and check that out and probably learn a little bit more and hopefully, you know, spark that little inner animal activist in you. So, anyways, back here. With all the shenanigans of animals being killed and slaughtered for the greed of people to the point of extinction such as elephant tusk, rhino horn, shark fin, etc. The list is apparently very long. So I decided to start on a new series raising awareness on animal cruelty where we more or less are oblivious from. And we're trying to create this uh, creative messages. Hopefully it can make a difference. So today, this video isn't about your normal commentaries on how I paint this image. No, ladies and gentlemen. Today is going to be different. So today I'm going to share with you what it takes from a crocodile to a handbag. Why is it animal cruelty and is it really cruel to these animals or is it just allegations? And my conclusion. So anyway, without further ado, hope you guys enjoy. So what's up with the skin crocodile and the woman holding a bag, dress, watch, and boots made out of crocodile skin? Well, a lot apparently. Does it really matter what kind of crocodile is used? To my surprise, yeah, apparently it does. To the trained eye? Tiling, symmetry, suppleness, and a scale-free quality subjected to a distinct grading system determine the price of each crocodile skin. The belly is the most expensive part of the skin because it is more supple and soft compared to the horn bag. The belly has its own grading system. Crocodiles bred in single pens have a different quality from those bred in mixed pens. Products made with one piece of large skin without cuts are more luxurious and expensive while products made with several joints or random cuts are priced lower. There are several species of crocodile currently being used in the fashion industry. You know what, I don't want to butcher the names because I don't think I'll pronounce this correctly. I'm not a zoologist, so I'm just going to list down the names of the crocodiles. So, for example, Porosus crocodile has fewer armor plates on its neck compared to other crocodiles and has a broad body in contrast to the other Lena crocodiles. It has the most even tiling and an almost perfect symmetry. Crocodile skin may also be used for jackets, vests, but they have to be garment grade. The process of garment washing makes the skin buttery, soft, and supple enough to wear. Believe it or not, there's even, wait for it, a t-shirt, everybody, a t-shirt made entirely of crocodile skin and is sold for 91500 American dollars. Yep, you heard right, just ask Hermes. There was a time crocodiles and alligators were nearly extinct due to the hunting for their supply of exotic leather, but that's where farms came in. Their numbers in the wild increase and were finally taken off the endangered list. So what's with all the fuss? Surely these animals must have been treated with respect and was killed humanely for their valuables. Right? Right? Well... In 2015, People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals aka PETA released their findings to the media on the cruelty of obtaining crocodile skin for luxury bags. After they are shot in the head with a bolt gun, their necks are sawed open, sometimes with a box cutter to sever the blood vessels. When the captive bolt gun was broken, the facility manager told a worker to cut into hundreds of conscious alligators and try to dislocate their vertebrae and then shove a metal rod up their spinal cords in an attempt to scramble their brains. They even have photos and videos to back it up, which I won't share with you here. You can go check it out yourself. It's very graphic content, so watch it at your own peril. You can still see the body writhing in pain after the neck being severed as a rod is shoved up their spine. In this case, I'm just going to use crocodile and alligators interchangeably, but they are a different species. Usually, these crocodiles are raised to the age of three. When they are harvested, they are kept in squalid conditions with dirty water. It takes at least three crocodiles to make a single Hermes Kelly bag, or one crocodile to make a single Birkin bag. Crocodiles are kept in crowded concrete pens, or a single crocodile kept in a pen shorter than its full length size. The water they swim in is dirty, in which the investigator wrote it smelled putrid and at times he had to refrain himself from vomiting. And because the workers do not wear proper safety gear, they get bitten and injured. However, you might be thinking this is very extreme. Is this real? Can we trust PETA? I 
thought Peter was kind of reliable until you know a few funny news with their involvement made me kind of not so convinced as I once was. But hey, I'm sure something this big has got to be the truth. I hope. But wait, there are some arguments that say the crocodile's movements after being shot or cut is just a reflex after death, as all reptiles have. For example, I'm pretty sure you've seen a lizard's tail twitching after it detaching from the body as a defense mechanism. In a recent event that hit the news in January 2017, videos and photos were posted after a crocodile was decapitated at a Thailand farm. Its severed head was put into a sink and its jaws still snapping while its body was writhing in a bucket on the floor. It is reported that consciousness is lost around 2 seconds after decapitation, so the movements are not deliberate. So does this mean crocodile leather is cruelty free after all and all this was just misguided perception? Well, to effectively kill a crocodile slash alligator, you shoot the gator in the quarter-sized kill spot on the back of its head. This is the only good spot to kill a gator for one reason. It is the only place on an alligator's body where you can shoot straight into an alligator's tiny brain. But the problem is that the brain is protected by a very thick skull and because of this, the spot to shoot the crocodile has gotten a whole lot smaller, people. There is a very small opening on the gator's neck to shoot and it will effectively kill it. But that's not quite all there is to it though. Even if you know where the kill spot is, not every shot on it will be equally effective. Since the bullet is entering behind the brain, you have to shoot at an angle from behind and above the gator with the gun pointed roughly in the same direction where the gator's nose is pointing. Shoot straight down or from the front and even if you hit the kill spot or the brain location, you might still not get through. And with that being said, I'm pretty sure there's no absolute certainty that these bags were made in a cruelty-free fashion. See what I did there? Cruelty-free fashion? Okay, never mind. Just, just forget I, I said that. Anyway, I am also pretty sure killing crocodiles slash alligators in the most humane and precise way is not exactly on the top of their priority list for the people in this industry. Know what I'm saying? But hey, who am I to know? Like they say, if you're in doubt, pretty sure it's a bad thing, right? And that's why I came up with this painting, hopefully to deter people from buying genuine crocodile leather bags. And besides, I totally get it. These bags made out of crocodile skin, they look absolutely beautiful. I'm not going to deny that fact. But that's why you have a lot of fake crocodile leather these days. No crocodile or alligator has to be killed or tortured just to obtain their wonderful supple skin. You can buy a lot of them fake and at a very reasonable price these days. So... No animal has to get hurt in the process. I hope this video has managed to explain some stuff or entreat you to do your own research on these animal products as I'm sure it may sound a little too extreme to be true. Crocodile skin is considered a very, very luxurious good and it shows people they have money to burn. I, on the other hand, have no money to burn, but if you'd like to support my cause and passion, you can check out my Patreon page and receive exclusive rewards. You can see the entire painting process in real time complete with audio full-size image, PSD file, PSD brushes used, and bonus free reference photos. You'll also be mentioned at the end of my video as a big thank you for choosing to support me. Now ain't that a good reminder to say thank you to my fellow patrons over at Patreon for the month of July 2017. Your generosity is greatly appreciated as it helps bring in my art supplies and upgrade my equipment. Speaking of upgrading my equipment, I just ordered a proper mic, so hopefully you guys will get better sound quality next week. Well, hope I bought a good quality one. Fingers crossed for me, people. Fingers crossed! You can also follow me on the following sites listed down below in the video description. That's all for today. I will see you guys on the next video. Ciao.